There was a guy named Carter. who came up with a leak-off model where he said basically the leak-off velocity, so this is a fluid velocity, leak-off velocity is going to be some coefficient, some experimentally determined coefficient, leak-off coefficient, over the time minus the total exposure time. So the total time that the fluid is in contact with the rock or the surface that it's leaking off. Okay, so CL is the leak-off coefficient. T XB is the exposure time. So then we'll just write a mass balance for a fracture, right? If it's just a single phase fluid, then it's just the flow rate in. The flow rate injected must be equal to the leak off, you know, whatever's exiting through the surface, plus whatever is stored in the fracture. Okay. So QL is the leak off rate over the whole fracture. QF is the volume rate of change, or the volume rate of storage. in the fracture. So QI is going to be equal to 2. So we're going to write down what QL is. QL is e we're gonna, it's going to be the integral from zero to the area of fracture as a function of time. The velocity, the leak off velocity times the area. I'm sorry, integral over the area. Plus, so this is the, this is the QL term, plus the width times the change in fracture, with the f change in fracture area with respect to time, okay? So this W bar is assumed constant. So assume it's a, co it's a constant width over the volume of the fracture. All right. You can manipulate this equation essentially so that it can be solved. Uh, lambda is just a double dummy variable of integration. So now you have a differential, differo, ah, can't. But we say integral differential equation, integral differential equation. So the unknown is the fracture area. And we can, this can be solved with Laplace transforms. Uh, UL, of course, is this Carter assumption. So plugging that in and then solving, we get we 
this. This ER EFRC is an error function. It's defined like this. So now we have a closed form expression for the area of the fracture in terms of constant width, injection rate, leak off, and you know, essentially material parameters, leak off coefficient. Right. So then the fracture length, the fracture length. can be obtained by dividing we'll call this L over L of T. Right? The fracture length as a function of time can be obtained by dividing the area of the fracture by two and by HF. So now we have a way to come up with length, but this assumes a fixed width. So the first fracture designs were then basically they used the Perkins and Kern model They'd assume a length, right? Use the Perkins and Kern model to come up with a width. Plug that into plug that into the Carter model and solve for a length. Take the length, plug it back into the Perkins Kern model. Solve for a width. Width back into Carter for a length. Length back into Perkins and Kern, and iterate until the, you have a converged solution or consistent solution. So the first fracture designs were done this way. And then once you had a consistent solution, you knew the width and the length. Then you could go back and determine what the net pressure should be for, via the Perkins and Kern model. <clears throat> I guess I should mention that you know, this is a pretty complex expression here. Uh, there was a guy, guys, Harrington and Hannah in 1975 that showed that with very little loss in accuracy, you could simplify this equation to this. So this is much simpler than this thing, where you have to compute the error function and all that. And so this is just an approximation to that. So that was sort of the very first way, okay, of uh, you know the first methodology that included both the fracture and fluid mechanics, 